right, kiddos, we're back, and we're going to start a new chapter today. We're going to talk about oxidation and reduction. You've probably heard these terms before in chemistry. You don't know what they mean, but perhaps you've heard of them before. It's part of a, this becomes part of our unit on electrochemistry, and oxidation and reduction reactions are very important. We often call them redox reactions. Read for reduction and ox for oxidation. So let's start simply by defining the terms. Oxidation. Oxidation is a chemical reaction, so a reaction that involves the, and I'm going to put in quotation marks here, loss of electrons. Oxidation is a chemical reaction that involves the loss of electrons. Now the reason I put the word loss in quotation marks is because you all know, due to the law of conservation of matter, we can't lose matter. Even if they're tiny, itty-bitty, teeny-weeny electrons, they can't technically be lost. They have to go somewhere. And that brings us to our second term, reduction. Reduction is a chemical reaction that involves the gain, and I'll put that in quotation marks as well, of electrons. Now, to gain electrons, they, they can't come out of thin air. We just can't magically produce electrons. They have to come from somewhere. So where do they come from? That's right, they come from the substance that lost electrons. So these two reactions must occur together. That's why we call them redox reactions. One does not occur without the other. In order for something to gain electrons, something else has to lose them. Now, it's easy to get these two terms confused. It happens all the time. I mean, after all, think about it. Reduction is gaining? That seems contradictory to me. How could reduction be gaining? Well, think about what happens to the charge of something when it gains electrons. Yeah, so let's say I'm neutral and I gain some electrons. What happens to my charge? Well, since electrons are negative and I gain negative charges, my charge gets lower it becomes reduced. So the term reduction deals with the fact that your charge, or the species charge, was reduced. Therefore, gaining electrons reduces the charge. Now, back when I was in high school, my chemistry teacher taught me this cute little saying that I remembered, um, well, my whole life. Whenever I think of electrochemistry, Leo the lion goes grr always comes to mind. LEO obviously is an acronym that we're going to lose, uh, use. LEO stands for lose electrons oxidation. And of course, LEO the lion goes grr, and grr is an acronym for gain electrons reduction. That way he'll never get the two confused, and I haven't since then. As soon as I learned that, I never forgot that oxidation is losing electrons. Leo, lose electrons, oxidation. And gaining electrons is reduction. Hopefully, you'll have the same experience. You'll think of Leo the lion going grr whenever you're trying to decide if something has been oxidized or reduced. Now, the next two terms are also important. Oxidizing agent and reducing agents. An oxidizing agent is the species in a chemical reaction that is reduced. And a reducing agent is the species in a chemical reaction that is oxidized. Now, these two terms are also commonly confused. The oxidizing agent is the species that's reduced. 
the reducing agent is the species which is oxidized. And I think the best way to help you with this is by giving you just a couple of simple examples. So, beneath our picture of Leo the lion, we have two reactions here. The first one involves magnesium atoms reacting with oxygen molecules to produce the compound magnesium oxide. Now, magnesium atoms are neutral. They have what we call an oxidation number of zero. They are neutral atoms. Likewise, oxygen molecules, the elemental form of oxygen, they also have an oxidation number of zero. But if you look on the other side of the equation, we form the chemical compound magnesium oxide. In order to do that, magnesium lost two electrons. It now has an oxidation number of positive two. And oxygen gained two electrons, didn't it? To become negative two. So something happened to the magnesium on the reactant side and the oxygen to allow them to form the compound magnesium oxide. Let's see. Magnesium went from an oxidation number of zero to positive two. In order to do that, it lost electrons. So we say that the magnesium was oxidized. What happened to the oxygen? Well, the oxygen went from an oxidation number of zero to two negative. It gained electrons. So we say that the oxygen in this reaction was reduced. Now, how was the oxygen reduced? Well, it had to gain electrons from somebody, and it gained those electrons from magnesium. Magnesium was oxidized because it lost the electrons to oxygen. It turns out that oxygen was the oxidizing agent in this reaction. Let's look at the definition for oxidizing agent and see if we can help us understand this a bit better. The oxidizing agent is the species that is reduced. So, how was oxygen an oxidizing agent? Well, let's say that you would like to get oxidized. In order to be oxidized, what would you like to do? That's right, you'd like to lose electrons. Well, how could I help you, as your agent, lose those electrons? Yeah, I could take them from you, couldn't I? Yeah, you want to lose electrons? I would accept them from you. Thank you very much for those electrons. What just happened to me, your agent, your helper? Yeah, I gained electrons. That's right, I was reduced. So in order to help you become oxidized, I had to get reduced. So the substance reduced is always the oxidizing agent. Now let's take a look at magnesium. It was oxidized. And we know up here that the substance that's oxidized is the reducing agent. Well, let's see. Why do we call the substance oxidized the reducing agent? All right. Well, well, let's say that you'd like to be oxidized. In order for you, or sorry, let's say you'd like to be reduced. In order for, for you to be reduced, what would you like to do? That's right, you'd like to gain electrons. Wouldn't that help you become reduced? So how could I, as your agent, help you gain electrons? That's right, I could give you some electrons. I could give you electrons allowing you to be reduced. I've helped you, as your agent, become reduced. You're welcome. Now what happened to me by helping you become reduced? Well, when I gave you electrons, didn't I have to lose those electrons? So, by helping you become reduced, I myself was oxidized. So the substance oxidized kiddos is always the reducing agent. Here, let's try another one. This is a net ionic equation here between bromide ions and chlorine gas. When bromide reacts with chlorine gas, it forms bromine and chloride ions. So, bromide ions start out at one negative each. The chlorine is a neutral element. It has an oxidation number of zero. During the reaction, bromine becomes neutral, oxidation number of zero, and the chlorine atoms be negative one. Okay, so in order for that to happen, what happened? Well, let's see. Br went from negative one to zero. 
how do you go from negative 1 to 0? That's right, you have to lose electrons. So we say the Br negatives, the bromide ions, were oxidized. Chlorine, Cl2, went from 0 to negative 1. Its oxidation number was reduced. So we say that the chlorine was reduced. Now, the substance reduced is the oxidizing agent, remember. Why is it the oxidizing agent? Well, to help somebody become oxidized, to help somebody lose electrons, you yourself have to gain electrons, so you are reduced. And Br negative is the reducing agent. Why is it the reducing agent? Well, to help somebody become reduced to be their agent, you yourself have to lose electrons to them, so you are oxidized. Okay? Hopefully that helps you with the definitions up above. All right. Now, I want to quickly talk about oxidation numbers. We've identified a few oxidation numbers already when we talked about the reactions up above. So determining the oxidation numbers for species within an ionic compound, as we did earlier, is pretty easy. In fact, we've been doing that for a long time. For instance, if I have the compound Na2S, the oxidation number for sodium, of course, is positive 1. Um, it lost an electron. For sulfur, it is negative 2. That's right, it has to gain 2 electrons to attain its noble gas configuration. But, how do we determine the charge or oxidation number on covalent molecules and other situations which are not so obvious? For instance, how would I find the oxidation number for carbon and oxygen in the compound carbon dioxide? Yeah. Well, that's something we're going to address in the next video. So we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.